Are you working your ass off trying to build a business that for one reason or another just won't grow? Well, if so, you got to tune in for today's video because I'm going to give you the top three reasons why your business won't grow. So what's going on, guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to give you the top three reasons as to why your business may be at a standstill. Yes, you're working hard. Yes, you're building your product. Yes, you're looking for customers. But for whatever reason, you're putting in all the work in the world and you're still not getting anywhere. And so I want to go into this topic right now. I'm super excited. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. So the best way that I can explain today's video is by introducing to you a new acronym from yours truly, your success strategist, okay? This, what you're experiencing in your business, you are suffering from bad business syndrome. Don't get offended. Wait till I give you the acronyms. See, I know that you care about your customers and I know that you're creating a quality product. But the fact is, you're not able to grow the business the way that you want to grow it because you have a bad business model. You don't have your business properly structured the way that you need to in order for it to take off. I know this because I've done this in the past and I've suffered for it. And I want to stop you from suffering the same way that I did starting today. So let's get right into it. What is the bad business model. Well, let's start first with B, okay? One of the top reasons why your business it will not grow is because of the fact that you don't know how to develop an effective brand, okay? Let's put that out there first. You don't know how to effectively build your brand. Okay, you've got to know how to build a brand. Now, what do I mean when I'm talking about a brand? You look at McDonald's, right? There's a certain brand behind McDonald's. McDonald's is the premier brand of the fast food industry. When you look at Nike, Nike is a brand. When you see someone with Nikes on their feet, right, as far as their shoes, you know that that represents a certain status. You know that it represents a certain meaning. It comes with it a certain brand. And what these brands have done successfully is having the ability to stand out from the competition. See, one of the biggest things that you're probably doing, which is the reason why your business is probably not growing, is because of the fact that your business in some ways, looks like a rerun of everybody else's, right? So if you are in the business of selling shirts, how does your shirt company stand out from everybody else's? If you are a restaurant, how does your restaurant make burgers than everybody else's burger restaurant? You've got to find a way to be able to stand out from your competitors. And the only way that you can do that is by building an effective brand. So here's the question that I have for you. What is it that makes you special? What is it that makes you a little bit different from everybody else? See, you may be trying to compete in a market for burgers or for books or whatever it is that your business sells, but if you sound the exact same as everybody else, there's going to be no reason for people to want to check you out because you're in an industry that's already established. The only way that you can have a fan base of customers coming to you specifically is if you have a way to differentiate yourself from everybody else. So that's the first thing that you need to think of. All bad businesses, they suffer from the curse of not building a proper brand. Why will In-N-Out Burger set up new restaurants in different states and different cities in the United States, 
but yet for one reason or another, everyone will go until the time it's a line around the block. You've got to wait 15 minutes in a drive through window just to be able to get an in and out because there's so many cars in front of you. They've built a brand. They have found a way to distinguish themselves in a crowded market. And that's the reason why people will always want to go to them for a unique offering. You've got to understand what makes you different. What makes you unique? What makes you better? This is what you need to understand. What is your A, okay? Your A, right, as the part of the bad business model is the fact that you sell to anybody. This goes along with not having a well-established brand. I'm going to give you a prime example of something that happened in the black community years ago. Even though it was not to our benefit, it was a very important case study in the world of business. Years ago, Tommy Hilfiger had went on a show. Tommy Hilfiger is the guy that basically made a long uh, line of polo shirts that were very prominently worn in the black community. So he goes on this show. I believe it was Oprah's show. And he says on national television that his shirts were not intended to be worn by black people. He made it known where he stood as a brand. He made it known as a part of his interview that there was a specific demographic of people that he was catering his business towards. Now, even though we may debate about how that came across when Tommy Hilfiger said it and the implications of making such a statement in a racist type of a way, one thing that he did make known as a business owner is he's not trying to sell to everybody. He's not just trying to sell to anybody. He has a specific person that he has in mind on who's going to get his shirts. And the, uh, the sure reality, <laughs> right? Let me catch my words. The sure reality of what business is about is about having a target market of people that you're going to sell your product to. A lot of times I work with different clients in some of my uh, private mentoring programs. And they want to start their own businesses, right? They're aspiring business owners. And then I ask them the very important question, who are you selling your product to? Their response to me, what do you mean who am I selling it to? I'm selling it to everybody. Everybody could use this. I want everybody to be able to experience this. And that's the number one problem. Because when you sell to everybody, in many ways you sell to nobody because you don't have a targeted message that actually resonates with any market of people. I'm going to give you an example. Let me write this down. Okay? A is anybody. You sell to anybody. And when you sell to anybody, you really sell to nobody, okay? Think about Rolex watch. You think Rolex is being sold to everybody? You think Ferrari, they're trying to sell a Ferrari to anybody? Whether you make $5 a week or $5 million a week. You think that Ferrari is literally trying to sell their top high quality vehicles to anybody? Absolutely not. They have a very targeted market of people that they're selling to. Now, in any market, you might have some outliers here and there. You might have a few select people that deviate from the market that Ferrari is exclusively marketing themselves to. But you'd be a fool to think that Ferrari is just trying to let any Joe Blow off the block ride around in their premier vehicles. See, they already have a particular age range of people that they're trying to sell this Ferrari to. They've already got uh, maybe a certain location. You're not going to find a Ferrari dealership 
in the hood. They've already got uh, maybe an income bracket of customers that they are looking for. So the question is, who are you selling your product to? If you're selling your product to anybody, chances are you have not built an effective brand. Even when you think about McDonald's, why do you not see McDonald's like that in very affluent neighborhoods? Why do you prominently see a McDonald's from one hood to the next? Because they understand who they are selling to. They understand the primary demographic of people that are in line to buy the product that they're trying to sell. And they've built their brand understanding that. Bad business means you have no brand. You just got something. Hey, I got this online. Go click it and buy it. You've established no brand. You've differentiated yourself in no way from your competitors. And moreover, you're selling it to anybody. Anybody with a dollar, you're good to go. I'm telling you, when you have this type of business set up, it's going to kill your revenue long term. It's going to kill your, pro uh, your uh, profit margin. Is going to kill all the opportunities that you have to really be able to distinguish yourself in the marketplace because you really have not done your due diligence about who your products and services should be going to overall. Okay, there's nothing wrong with having a product or service that could possibly be used by anyone, but the error lies when you don't establish a target market because when you don't have an audience of people that you're speaking specifically to, matching their interests, their hobbies, um, their uh, hopes and dreams, right? Their fears. When you don't have someone in place that you can speak to as if you were in their direct window, that means you're really not compelling to anyone because you're speaking from such a broad point of view. And that's the reason why I've branded my channel as Black Men's Career. I'm making it very clear in terms of who I'm dedicating the message for, even if Women want to be able to connect with this? Sure, they could. But I'm making my message so laser-focused towards a particular demographic when I'm speaking to my target market, they're going to know that I'm talking to them. And I'm going to create a stronger relationship with them than any other competitor that doesn't really represent the needs of that industry. OK, so you got to be able to understand that when you talk to anybody, you talk to nobody. OK, here's the last part in the bad business model that you may be operating off of. You know what the problem is? You've got a product that can sell. But you're not doubling down on your process. Instead, you sell one product and then you get super excited and then you want to sell it. Another product that's totally different. You have no process that you're doubling down on to make a repeatable system out of what already works. This is something that I have to write down. You're not doubling down, okay? When you again, look at McDonald's. Does McDonald's uh, sell a Big Mac one day and then sell pizza uh, and all of these other types of foods another day, right? Is McDonald's going to turn into a steakhouse just because of the fact that they've made billions of dollars selling hamburgers? No. They figured out what worked for them, and then they doubled down on that. They went all throughout the market, grabbing a large portion of market share, doubling down on what works. A lot of times what people do is, they begin a business endeavor. The business endeavor, it could go fine. It could even be successful. But what happens to the average person is they become bored doing the things that already works. They get tired of selling the same thing from one day to the next. Even though the essence of business is coming up with a predictable, repeatable system that works. You find out what works in the marketplace and then you double down on it. You don't just take your business and treat it like it's a hobby. Oh yeah, one day, you know, I'm selling shirts. 
Oh, well, another day I'm selling chicken wings. Another day I'm selling books. Another day, you know, I'm offering skydiving courses from Mount Everest. This doesn't work. You've got to be able to find out what works for you. What is your golden ticket into business? And then you got to keep duplicating that so that way you can make your mark within a market, right? So if you got millions of people all over the world that would love the product or the service that you're offering, why keep switching it up from one day to the next? If it works, duplicate it. Refine the process so you can make whatever it is that you're making faster. Make what you're offering better, right? Make what you're offering in some ways cheaper for your own company's bottom line. Even if you're not changing the price on the outside, these are things that you should be doing on the inside to be able to double your own profits. But if you keep bouncing from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing, how are you ever going to be in business long term? You look at any major industry and you look at businesses that are industry leaders, right, in those arenas, you notice they always stick to the same thing. Heinz, what is it that they make? I bet you could tell me the answer if you could talk to me. They make ketchup. Gerber, what is it that they make? I bet you could tell me the answer if you could talk to me. Ke uh, baby products, <laughs> right? Baby food. Why is it that they stick with that one thing? Because they understand that if they bounce all over the place and they end up putting out a million different types of products and services, they're going to dilute their own brand. They're going to weaken their market share because they're not getting enough love from their target market. They're selling to anybody and they haven't taken what works and doubled down on it in a way that's effective. So those are the top three reasons why your business uh, probably is not growing. It's not necessarily because of the fact that you have a product that sucks. It's because of the fact that you have not taken that product and given it the proper marketing that it deserves, right? They've got the saying out in society. It says, if a tree falls down in the woods and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound? If nobody's around to hear it, who cares what sound it makes? <laughs> so you could have a product, but if you have not properly developed a brand, to help you take that product as far as it could go, that's one of the reasons why your business isn't really taking off. If you're selling to anyone, you have not created a, a, a target market of people that you could say, okay, you know what? This is for this particular type of audience, right? Think about gyms. Does Planet Fitness attract the same type of consumer as Equinox gyms? Both of them are gyms, but they're looking for two different types of customers. If you sell to anybody, you will sell to nobody, okay? Last and not, but not least, whenever you have created an effective product or a service, your number one strategic focus has to be to double down on what's working. Too many people take something that's already working they don't push it as far as it can go because they're so excited to just chase the shiny mirage, the shiny object that they go into something totally different and it takes twice as much time to create, twice as much money, you're losing your profits and people may not even like the second product as much as they did the first. Better for you to take that one product and keep doubling down on your process than bounce all over the place and now you don't really have a loyal customer, okay? So leave me a comment and I want you to tell me about which area of bad business you've been guilty of. Has it been you haven't really taken the time to develop a brand? You're just hoping that your product would sell itself? 
Is it that you have not really developed a target market? You're so busy thinking that because of the fact that anybody will use what you've gotten, that has actually hurt you. That's hurt your business, right? And then last but not least, are you guilty of shiny object syndrome and you keep doubling down instead of focusing on what works, okay? These are the top components of things that can help your business grow over time. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. If you're serious about trying to become a better business owner, make sure that you click the link below to get into my Empire Builder. This is a free five-day success training from yours truly where I'm trying to show you all for free how to be able to set up your own personal empire. I'm showing you how to go from working at a nine to five job to actually making the exit plan into starting a business. Or if you think that you need to work at a job a little bit longer to start building up some more cash flow so you can invest it into your business, I show you in the Empire Builder how to go about getting a better job within the next 90 days, okay? So you really got no reason not to get the Empire Builder. The only reason why you wouldn't get it is if you don't want to build an empire but you're watching this channel to build one. So be your brother's keeper. Share this video with those that can use it, okay? Let's continue to support each other because we all we got, all right? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.